Again, Dave Parker once again with Compton EdTech. And today I want to show you how we move towards the completion of this project. Now, last time I left you, I was telling you about taking and driving a nail through this rear axle so that we could use that to attach this string. Now, I accomplished this by using my trusty hammer. And you're going to say, Mr. Parker, it's not hammer time. I know, but there are a number of ways you can do this. I use the hammer because it works out well. And if you're going to hold this, again, when using tools like this, please make sure that you get uh, instruction, guidance, supervision from your parents or from an older adult who's more experienced with this. This small nail and this small axle, it takes a little bit of touch. As you can see here, I have actually ended up splitting this one show that too. I ended up splitting that, but it's not a big deal because I could easily use some glue, some ordinary glue to put that back together to make sure it works properly and taped it. Remember, engineering is about solving problems. So don't get frustrated. Just think about how you can solve the problem and move on. So I did that. I tapped it through and then I found a way I had to take one of these off to put one axle on at a time to put it back on. So now I'm back here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a small knot in the edge of the, on the end of this string, as you can see, hopefully here, and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of, or to the end of this nail. And then I'm going to start to wind the device back. I'm going to wind it back. That way I can wind it up and get the energy that I need to make it go by itself. So here, I'm going to attach it, and you may have better luck with this because you're younger and your eyes work a little bit better. So now I've got it attached. I'm going to pull the string a little taut so that I can go ahead and wind it up. Keep in mind, when you're winding, winding it, you want to keep the string between these two little silver eyelets. That way you don't have any weirdness in you want to keep it as even as possible evenly wound in the same space if you possibly can now as i re wind that back it's going to get to the point where my lever is going to start to move up and that's totally acceptable some students like to move the car back i like to wind it because it works a little better i can have a little bit more control over it and as I continue to wind it, continue to wind it, I don't want this much slack here, so I'm going to keep it tight. Keep winding it, keep winding it, keep winding it. And eventually, see, this is what the part I don't want. I don't want it outside of here. So I want it all in here. I don't want any extra friction. And now that it's tight, you'll see now the entire thing will start to move. Oops. Again, that's not a problem. It goes right back on. And so now my lever is going up. And now it's loaded and ready to go. See, this is holding. That shouldn't move. So even if I didn't use these clamps, I could have tied that down. No problem. Now, for me, what I generally do, I don't take any of my parts off. Some people take all the parts off of their mouse traps. I don't because I like the safety factor of being able to take this lever right here and setting it up as a traditional mouse trap right over here, just like that. And that way it's ready. I can touch that. The wheels will spin and I know that I'm doing it. So if the wheels move, I did it right. Let's see what happens. Yay! Now, that's what's supposed to happen. Now there's a problem because it's going to go. And you see, because it's still attached to that, it's going to stop. And then once it stops, it's going to go back into reverse. So the problem you're going to have to solve then is, how to make it let go. There are a couple ways to do it, but again, 
Engineering is about solving problems. Let's see what you come up with. I'm going to put these front wheels back on and we'll give it a test run. Stay tuned.